conceptual perspectives people talk Real about talk, it, it throwing shots. all of the elements. <laughs> Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, Dr. Ray Wallace dropping in on you. Hope everybody's having a great start to the year. Uh, you know my saying. That no matter where you're at, no matter how it's going, good or bad, if you're still breathing, you're still in the fight. Um, and that's something you've got to carry with you because there's simply just going to be times where things aren't going the way you want them to go. And uh, you've got to be able to push through because it's that simple. If you're still breathing, you're still in the fight. Fight's not over. We don't give up. We don't quit. We live until we are done living. And that's when we take our last breath. Um, as you saw with the preemptive video, uh, we are still in the midst of a fundraiser. We did not hear, hit our uh, final goals for uh, what we're shooting for to close out the year strong. And so we're still pushing, we're still challenging, we're still asking if you believe in the work we're doing, if you believe that there is a need for the work we do in the community, whether it's with our programs, whether it's with our research center, our think tank, Black Men Lead, uh, the program we have for intimate partner violence and domestic violence, uh, mental health, all of this stuff. If you followed me, you know I've been here for a minute and we have gone through a lot together. We need your support. Uh, yes, I appreciate the likes. I appreciate the comments. Keep, keep them coming. I definitely appreciate an increase in subscribership. But at the end of the day, we do need resources. So again, I'm challenging everybody. Uh, as it stated in the beginning, we need your support. Show some love and give okay with that being said i want to talk to you from a place of pure passion from but from an an educated awareness of this push that comes from so deep within with me if you followed me if you've read my books if you've watched my lectures uh if you've paid attention to my videos. I have a love for our people that cannot be denied. And I have had a special place in my heart for the passions and struggles of black women. I am a black man, so my love and push to the, to the healing and the wholeness of black men is inherent. It's just there. I identify with you, I see you. When nobody else sees you, black man, I see you because I am you. But there's a yearning to be better for our women within me because that's my challenge to myself is being better for our women, being better for whoever it is that's going to come into my life um, and take on the role uh, eventually at some point of my life. Uh, uh, but whoever that may be, you know, but also for my daughters, for my nieces, for my grand nieces, my granddaughters, for all the young women out there that I see that are so beautiful and yet face so much detriment. I have a love for you. I fought for you. you I've gone into pain. I've been called a simp because I uh, cape so hard 
for the wholeness and health and protection of our women. And I will continue to do so because I believe it's the responsibility of our men to provide it. But let me tell you something. The first point of healing is accountability. It, it, it isn't taking the blame for something someone else has done. It's taking accountability for being uh, whole and healthy. And whole and healthy, you can't be carrying hatred. You can't be carrying, uh, a, a, I mean, a, a pure disdain for an entire group of people based off of what a few people did. And so this, this piercing darkness of the soul of black people, let me tell you what's going on. I'm going to tell you from an experiential perspective. I'm going to tell you from a scientific perspective. And I'm going to tell you how it's being perpetuated. You got to understand, we came out of slavery. After 246 years of chattel slavery, we came out of slavery as it was known and entered into, for all intents and purposes, slavery by a new name. We weren't truly free. We had been released from the plantation, but we still lacked true liberation, true direction, and true freedom to move as we so fit. And even when we sought to operate in our own uh, sufficient and uh, form of autonomy, we were interrupted, we were attacked, we were looted, we were, we were uh, massacred. We were burned. We had Tulsa. We had Slocum, Texas. We had Rosewood, Florida. We had uh, Wilmington, North Carolina. We had East St. Louis. We had so many different places where we were building and we were moving on our own and it was interrupted. So we have all these different things. We had black codes. We had convict leasing. We had redlining. We had urban uh, urban renewal, benign neglect. We moved into mass incarceration, miseducation, gentrification, and things are still moving. We still have these uh, nefarious machinations aimed at us and we have to navigate it. Now, in the sense of all of that, you gotta understand that everything we've experienced is a form of trauma. So we're talking about complex trauma over generations while epigenetically creating a predisposition to be traumatized. We're passing down our generational trauma. Now, here's the thing. We are simultaneously being trained all the way from slavery not to trust one another, to blame one another, when stuff got, because what happened is the moment that one black person on the plantation did something wrong, it got hard for everybody. So it taught us that your behavior impacts me. Have you ever set up a scene? I saw it. I saw it for the first time, and I had to gain an understanding of it. One of the reasons why I was already leaning towards psychology when I first came across Dr. Francis Chris Welsing, who pretty much solidified my decision. I was going to be an attorney or a psychologist, but the reason I was pushing psychology, I needed to understand certain things. One of the things I needed to understand is why every time that, and my grandparents watched the news religiously, oh my God. Uh, so why every time on the news that they started a story and they were telling the story about some crime, somebody done robbed somebody, somebody done shot somebody, somebody done did something illegal, that before they showed the mug shot, my parents were going, please don't let this be black. Please don't let it be black. Oh God, please don't let it be black. And I didn't understand why was it important because nobody else did this. Nobody else is going to say, please don't let it be a white dude. White people aren't doing that. Asians aren't doing that. So why are black people doing it? Because we have been trained that we are represented by every other black person on the planet. That, And that we are more likely to be re viewed and assessed based off the worst of us. So no matter how good you're doing, no matter how well you're fared and, and how many good people out there, it's the one bad apple that's gonna set the, uh, set the table for everybody else. And we really truly act and believe that way. This is years and years of conditioning. So what happens? We tend to assign behavior to the masses. So when one person does it, that means you're all like that. Now, so what happens is, let's say you were a very active dater. You're a very active dater. You dated, I'm talking seriously. I'm not talking about just out there. You are very active relationally. Let's put it that way. So over the course of your 20 years of adulthood, you've had 20, uh, and I'm exaggerating for a reason. You have 20 relationships, and all of those relationships were horrible. The guys were horrible. Then that already, in and of itself, solidifies your belief that black men aren't good because 
all 20 of your relationships are bad. Here's the problem with that. The one thing that moving into academics and understanding studies and sciences is understanding groupings and understanding uh, the size of, uh, of uh, a study in how many uh, people you have participating in a study to understand the validity of the study. So you're saying out of that 20, uh, let's just say men in America, black men in America, out of that 20, we're talking about somewhere around 20 million black men in America, 20 million males. Let's, let's put it like that. 20 million. So uh, somewhere around, let's say 15, 20. So 20 out of 15 to 20 million gave you less than what you deserve and treated you far less than you deserve to be treated. Okay, there's a problem with that. And that needs to be addressed and dealt with in, in certain and for sure. So that is definitely something you cannot ignore, something that you cannot sit up and say, okay, but you got to look at it and say, okay, we're talking about 20 men. We're talking about a number of different variables that we have taken into place. And we are going to, whether we want to admit it or not, have to look at what the common denominator is. That's going to be any study. What is the variable that's always present? The variable that's always present is you. Now, unless these men got together and planned before the first one met you, hey, we're going to pick this one out right here and we're going to take turns mistreating her, mishandling her, all of which is horrible, all of which is bad, all of which needs to be accounted for. Black men need to be held accountable for how, accountable for how we treat our women. We need to be conditioned and trained. That's why I've created Black Men League, because we do. We need to create a population of black men who know how to handle black women. We're not excusing what they did. We're condemning what they did, but we're also saying this, and this is my reason for saying this, that we have to look at it and say, okay, the only common denominator is you. It doesn't mean that it's your fault that they did it. It means that there's something there that is missing it in the beginning. Yes, guys run game. Guys present their representative just like women do. Now, here's my problem. When you sit up and you say all black men are no good, black men don't know how to love black women. You completely ignore the millions of black men who are doing it every day. And you immediately lose the men, the men you need, to, the black men you need to have in your corner. When you take that approach, you lose them. They're not going to come at you in a negative way, but they're not going to want to deal with you because you are uh, simultaneously grouping them with cats that they don't want to have anything to do with. And the things, and if you're like me, someone who actually is confronting it and putting themselves on the line, confronting guys who are doing this, you really, you really insult the black man who actually would be a good connection for your, for, for, for the masculine side of your healing. But here's what I'll tell you. Someone that I've had encounters with for a while now. And I, I, I'm not for putting people on blast. If you stay on, if you pay attention, you've seen them post, but I'm not gonna put them on blast because I'm really concerned about their health. You can post anything. If it has anything in the entire 40 minute video about a relationship between a black man and a black woman, it doesn't have to be the theme. It just has to be in there. That's what the comment is gonna be about. It could be about anything else. The comment is gonna be about what if we don't wanna be with black men? You, uh, don't, don't, there's a whole group of us out there that are purpose, uh, that are single on purpose. Then, then you have to deal with the science of that. While it sounds good, it has high twinges of toxic femininity in it. And what it says is, I hate men so much. In this case, black men so much. And when they, and I hate when they do this. Just like black women hate when men do this. I hate when they sit up and say black men as if all other races treat their women so perfectly and so great and you know that you can't find all the bull crap that you see are behaviors that black men actually picked up from some other group because we didn't bring it from Africa. But nonetheless, that's a digression. Here's what I'm trying to get across to you. 
when you sit up and you say we don't need black men but then you say we just use them as sperm donors or we get in vitro so what you're saying is you have taken by way of your hatred of black men an unnatural position in life and if anybody understands anything the purest form of living is the natural state the way the universe was designed to operate now because we've corrupted it and because we've treated life like trash because we have lost our sense and soul and purpose yes it's messed up but taking an unnatural role automatically takes you out of alignment now here's what it does and nobody in that group is going to realize it because you drive you're driven by pure hatred if the first thing out of your mouth anybody says something is an attack on black men that points to a hatred of black men it's it points to an isolated observation because you don't know all black men you have obviously not studied because studies show that actually black men are the most involved in their children's lives more than white men more than asian men more than arab men literally more involved more engaged and that 88 percent of black men despite the push that all black men love black women 88 percent of black men who are married married to black women now there are some issues the more successful the more likely they are to be out of that spectrum and marry outside of their race. Some of that is chasing whiteness because they actually believe white is better. Some of it is environment. The higher you go in success and earnings, the less you are around your people. I'm not justifying it. Anybody that knows, knows I am black. I'm gonna marry a black person. You know, what scale, what scale on the black scale, I don't know, but they will have African descent. That's, that's me. Uh, it's what I believe in. You got to be able to understand my struggle. You got to be able to stand with me. I got to believe that when I'm going to the mat, you're going to the mat with me. Now, I'm going to defend you. I'm going to protect you. But I cannot be defending something that is originating from something that I'm fighting against. Just a lot of conflict for me. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm digressing from that. Back to this. When you hold that kind of hatred for anybody, you destroy yourself. There is an internal thing happening spiritually, emotionally, psychologically. I don't have time to get into it and explain it on a scientific level, but literally you're destroying yourself. All of the hatred triggers certain uh, certain neurons in the brain to release and trigger stress responses. Stress responses are going to put adrenaline and cortisol in your bloodstream. Over a long period of time, cortisol wreaks havoc on your autoimmune uh, system. That makes you more susceptible to cancer, more acceptable to lupus, more acceptable to type 2 diabetes. Anything that's going to have an inflammatory response is going to have a higher susceptibility when you're in this state of constant anger, constant hate, constant vitriol. The truth of the matter is, anybody that'll sit up and say, I'm going to teach my daughters not to marry a black man, doesn't realize the, the depth of that statement because you cannot teach them to hate the blackness and a man without, that, without the association of the blackness being to the woman. We're connected. We're inextricably bound. You cannot break that bond even if you want to try. Now, you can separate yourself physically, but it will not detach you from who you are. The moment you start at hate any type of blackness, I, for all the black men out there hating on black women, it's the same thing. You're sitting up and you can't hate her without hating yourself. That's why so many black men who seem successful in one area are so weak in others. Here's why. The first thing that you think about when you sit up and decide that I've made it is I'm gonna go get me a white woman because a white woman is better. But here's the problem. On a neurological, uh, mental level, you can't associate a white woman being better than a black woman without automatically having the deep assumption that the white man's better than you puts you in an automatic inferiority complex. You're going to have to learn to love you. The moment you start to really truly love you, you start to get outside of what somebody else is doing anyway. The more you start to love you, the more you start to re repel people who can't. Now, you can sit up and you can make all kind of reasons, all kind of excuses. What I'm trying to tell you is I've had to do my work. So this isn't about black man beating up on a black woman. I fought too damn hard for black women for you to throw that bullshit at me. So I'm not going to take it. I fought too hard. I go hard in the paint for black women. I've been every damn simp in the book by 
raggedy ass black men because I cape for black women. So you're not gonna throw that. But what I but what I'm not gonna do is tell you your shit don't stink. What I'm not gonna do is tell you that you have some culpability in some of the things that are going on around here. What I'm not gonna tell you is you can't isolate yourself and say I can do it all by myself and then have a substandard product come out of it and then want to sit up and blame. No, what we need to realize is we need healing. We're both screwed up. We both need to focus and look. The one thing that these people knew is if we can destroy the black family, we need to re, re, re we need to re-identify, we need to redefine what the black no. That's a history of shows what happens when you venture from traditional family. I mean, thousands of years of history shows every time you try to venture away from family and create something new because it's the cool thing to do or because I want to uh, experience life and do what I want to do. I want it my way. It always explodes. There's a divine nature and a divine order. We were divine to move in a certain way and we're built a certain way. We're not physiologic. They'll tell you that it's just phenotype difference, but there are some genotype differences. One is in the uh, the, the spiritual center, the pineal gland. It's more than just what produces our melanin. It's our susceptibility to spiritual information. It's our susceptibility to spiritual phenomena. It's our susceptibility and our access to things beyond us. And they know this. That's why they flood everything they can think of with um, uh, fluoride because fluoride calcifies the pineal gland. They're, they're leveling the playing field. Look, I love you sisters. And for every man that's ever harmed you, for every man that found it to be a, an acceptable uh, course of action to procreate and abandon their progeny, for every man that felt it acceptable to put his hands on you, for every man accepted, found it acceptable to lie to you and then, uh, violate his vows or his promises or his words I personally apologize I know you're hurting here's what I want you to understand that man doesn't represent every black man that man doesn't represent me I am never going to punish any woman for what some woman in my past has done I'm never going to hold a grudge for anything a woman in my past has done because that woman has a story and it tells me that she's dealing with something in her story whoever it may be same thing with a man broken men break shit it isn't that he's black it's that he's broken you can't take something broken and love it you're going to get cut by the shards of his brokenness and you're going to hemorrhage the love you have and it's going to fall on hollow ground and eventually you're going to become bitter. The idea that you can go off and get in vitro or use a man solely for his sperm and go off and have a successful group of people that are going to thrive without a core element present tells me that's hatred. We've proven over and over again that doesn't work. We're where we're at right now because that doesn't work. We've got to get out of uh, this place where we're allowing how they have manipulated situations to make us see ourselves in a light that does not allow us to heal. I can go on and on about this, but I'm not done. I've got to get in this gym and deal with all these New Year's resolution people that's decided to show up. And this is going to be great. I'm probably going to catch a case because these people get on my last nerve. But whatever it is, here's the thing. I love you. I love you just for the sake of being strong enough to still be standing and breathing. But we've got to own this shit and we've got to stand up and we've got to move forward. We've got to be what we were designed to be, not what they have turned us into and what we have allowed. And again, for my sisters who have gone through, I'm not condoning that bullshit. I'm speaking down and I'm condemning it. 
But what I will not condone is you slamming every black man but because of what those men did. Do we have a significant number that need to be dealt with, that need to have? Uh, yes, we do. But that doesn't speak for the whole. You can't sit up and teach a principle based off a of partial. You're going to sit up and you're going to damage a child because you are passing your trauma down. You're passing your pain down. You're passing your bias down. This isn't Doc speaking on feelings. This is Doc speaking on 30 years of research. I can't get you healed when you're doing that and you're going to damage the kid. Of course you're not. Of course you're not. You know, you love your kids. You, know, you can't stop what you don't know. I know. I put 30 years in understanding this. I've gotten a bunch of people healed because I understand it. There's not one perfect out there, but there are a bunch that will go to the mat for you. The crazy thing is you've completely shut the door on them. You've probably spit on a bunch of them because of how you think about black men. You've become that bitter black woman that black men talk about. And I don't like that either. I don't like identifying one another from negative connotations based off of uh, small group observations. Look, I am I'm going I'm to I'm get off here, but I'm definitely coming back on this one. And this isn't me being mean. This is me being real. This is me saying we can't sit up there. I can't be truly authentic if I'm caping for black women and I'm fighting for black women, but I'm letting you shit on black men that I love, that I'm letting you shit on black men that I believe in. I'm letting you shit on me. That's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. If you want to heal, I'll help you find the place to heal. I'll get you a good, strong sister that can help you heal. But you study attacking black men to a black man and it makes sense to you come on it's only so long that I'm going to let that fly before I sit up and say okay I'm trying to be kind I'm trying to be soft but at some point you got to care enough about yourself to care about the people who care about you let that sink in on that note I'm out of here